And so this happened about, I don't know, a little over 12 hours ago. Myself and Robert Whitaker talking about the big win over Ikram Ali Skarov. It's a great chat, one of my favorites with Bobby Knuckles. Here it is. Enjoy. All right. So for the better part of the last 10 years, I've kind of forced Robert Whitaker to wake up at ungodly hours to do the program live. I feel like after the past two weeks that he just endured, uh, it would be kind on our part to allow him to do a pre-taped interview at a more normal time for him. So that's why we're doing this uh, in a, in a pre-taped fashion because I just didn't want him to wake up so but, uh, so early. So here we are. But, but mate, like this is the time we should have done it because I'm jet lagged out of this world. Uh, oh, right? So I've been up since 5 a.m. anyway. Uh, we could have done live. <laughs> Your your team told me it was too early. Your team said it was too early. So here I am doing a rare. I don't usually like the pre tapes, as you know. Uh, we like to be in the studio, but but I thought this was my gift to you after. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll take it anyway. Been. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, wow, what a, what a two weeks. And uh, usually I don't like to start at the end. I kind of like to go in chronological order. However, uh, I did see an interview with your manager Titus Day. He gave it to uh, Fox Sports Australia, talking about an issue that you had in your mouth and a, a surgery that right. you had to uh, undergo before leaving. And this has now put the the performance and the win in such a greater light. What could you tell us about what you had to go through before you left to Saudi Arabia? Uh, it wasn't anything super drastic. Like um, a couple of days before I flew away, uh, flew out, I had to um, get a couple of root canals. I had like a pretty bad infection in my jaw. And um, yeah, it, it wasn't anything crazy. I, didn't, I, <laughs> I wouldn't have brought it up. You know, uh, it's just, um, yeah, it's just hurt. <laughs> it hurt. And, um, and uh, like once, once the, had a couple of course of antibody, antibiotics that I took over with me and once they kicked in and, um, the pain went away, I was, I was pretty good. But for those couple of days, my tooth pain is terrible. Okay. So if I have tooth pain, I just kind of complain and I lie down, you get punched in the face for a living. You're training for a huge <laughs> fight. So how did you yeah. deal with that? Well, well, like I said, it was the infection that was the problem, and it wasn't. Mate, it was honestly is up there with like probably like some of the worst pain I've ever had. It was crazy bad. It was yeah. It, so like the the that week leading into me flying out on the weekend, I, I wasn't doing anything. I was just just eating painkillers, like waiting for the antibiotics to kick in. Then um, got a couple root canals. Which we're, we're done. We were, we're thinking maybe I'd have to rip the tooth out, but I was worried about healing during the weeks leading up to the fight, making sure it healed in time. But fortunately, I didn't need to do that because the antibiotics kicked in, and then I got to the fight, and I'll, I'll finish up the rest of the procedures that I need now this week. Is it is it true that for the the few days you know during all this you couldn't really eat or sleep well or train at all? Oh. Like you, it was awful. Definitely not. Like I, I kid you not, pain levels. It would have been like a nine point five out of ten. It was crazy bad. <laughs> Maybe I just don't take tooth pain very well. Like, but I had the infection was like in my jaw here. It was just ah, it's just a pain. <laughs> yeah, a pain literally. <laughs> so what's wild about this is at the beginning of all this, you just said it wasn't that big of a deal, and now you just called it a nine point five out of ten. So it sounds like it was yeah. a pretty big deal. <laughs> it hurt, right? But like, I'm, it's I don't know. Like, it it hurt. That's for sure. But it went away, and I was all good. By the time, probably by about midweek, once I was in Dubai, the the pain was gone. I had finished my course of antibiotics. I didn't take the second course because I thought, like, I didn't want to be taking antibiotics as I'm cutting weight and stuff. But um, yeah, it it, it kind of all come good. Um, did you consider pulling out? Nah, not even, not even the slightest. You know, okay. it's, all the work had been done by that point, and I was the only thing I was worried about was if I had, if I did have to rip the tooth out, the hole that would have been there, you know, and okay. just like it healing during the the two weeks leading into the fight, and how that would have looked. But I'm sure I would have worked it out. And how's it feeling now? Yeah, no, it's 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 still good. It's still good. I, I go back for my. So it's like a three three stage procedure. So I go back for the second stage now because I, I obviously because I was flying out, I could only do the first part um, before I left and got to finish it off to, to, um, in the next couple of days. Okay. Uh, well, good luck with that, of course. And uh, it sounds like a nightmare, <laughs> especially if you're getting punched in the face. And uh, you know, 
luckily for you, the fight didn't last very long. Um, so now I want to go back to you know when this original main event fell apart. It was on the same day, at least from what we were told and what we found out as the Conor McGregor news. And so it was back to back where you hear about, you know, Conor officially out and Hamzat officially out. When did you find out that he was in danger and then eventually officially out of the fight? There was, there was no rumors that he was in danger. There was just coach pulled me aside early in the morning and said, Hey, Chamayev's out, but we're finding a new opponent. Stay switched on, you know, don't, don't, don't stress about it. And then he left and I went to breakfast. And then by the end of breakfast, we had a new name. Okay. And at, at any point in the process of accepting this fight and preparing for this fight, was there any thought in your mind that he might not make it to the fight? There's been some issues with him, some health issues. Like, was this something that you were concerned about? Um, not, not really because of the location. Because I, I do know he's had trouble getting to certain places and, and, and obviously health-wise. But you can't account for health-wise. And the location, I thought, was pretty, pretty bang on for him to get there. But you know, it, it is what it is. It's. Uh, I'm glad he's doing well. I, I think he's, he's he's much healthier than he was pulling out. But um, you know, I, I, outside of the octagon, we're just people. You know, you know I, I don't want anyone to get sick. And what was the reason that you were told for his withdrawal? Um, much like anybody else's, <laughs> you saw my eye. Much like anybody else's, I, I, he, he was he was really sick. That's uh, okay. that's what I heard. Um, obviously, you ended up with Ikram, but I'm just curious: were any other names thrown your way? Were there any other names in the mix? No, nah, and I left I left a lot of this to to my team to talk about and 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 organize. So if they were given other names, I don't know. Speaking to them, not really. I, I don't think any other names were given. But um, yeah, Ikram was 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 thrown around, was thrown up, put up. And you know, no one wants to fight it. No one wanted to fight him, and I'm glad he stepped up to the plate. Is it true that you were completely unfamiliar with him? Like you had never heard his name prior to all of this? Yeah, and and I meant no disrespect at all. Sure, I, sure. I know a lot. Of, I know I mentioned that on on an interview, and then everybody took it out of context, and then he had to respond about it because people are, you know what I mean? They started playing the game, but yeah. it was no disrespect because I don't watch a lot of UFC. Okay, so first and foremost, and secondly, it's not like he's been in the UFC for, for a ton of time, right? So um, we, with no disrespect, I hadn't. But after, the, obviously, getting paired with him, I did a lot of research then. I watched some footage during the week and uh, prepared appropriately. And so he's had a, a nice little short run in the UFC. Obviously, his one loss was to Hamza. When you started to to dig into who he is and watch some of the film, did your confidence go up? Because I, I, I felt, and I'm not saying this in retrospect, I said it before the fight, like I thought a lot of people were almost trying to convince themselves that this could maybe be a tougher fight for you or that he's on your level. Like mm -hmm. he's just he's just newer to the game and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You've been in there for so long, former champion, etc. When you saw that compared to what you were thinking and preparing for with Hamzad, did you think like, okay, you know, there's levels to this and he's not quite on my level just yet? Uh, not really. So I, I I was part of that group you 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 said before that um was were was saying that like he he has the skill set to make this a harder fight than it need be, you know um I I wholeheartedly believe that my skill set is more complete. I thought I was I was better you know better geared to to the fight, but I understood like that if if I give him an inch he'll take a foot sort of thing so i um yeah i just i went into the fight giving giving him the gravity he deserves like the the respect the fight deserves and you know the rest is kind of history and and just curious because it sounds like you were all in from the jump but was there any part of you or any member of your team who said this guy isn't ranked he's not a household name there's a lot for us to lose and not much to gain other than money of course and and, and mm -hmm. continuing on with your career and trying to get back into the title picture like maybe we should just wait for a title contender to come our way was there any talk about just skipping this one not a yeah no not a, not a single bit okay. the team knew that i came to fight and that's the mentality we have i feel like you can't be picking and choosing i can't feel like you can't let that weakness creep into your mind you know we we are we are warriors and we came here to fight and you know fight we're gonna do okay because, you know, there are some people who would say, like, there's just nothing for me to gain here. So, um, yeah, I and I, I feel like that'll that'll bite 
them in the ass one day. Like yeah. that, you can't let that that level of weakness creep in because, mate. One like, how can you sleep at night being a fighter knowing you didn't fight someone because there's nothing to gain? Like you, you, that in itself says that you're scared of losing against that guy. You're 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 scared of what's at stake against someone with nothing to gain. You know what I mean? And like, how do you how do you sleep at night knowing you turned that down? Like. <laughs> But you do know there are fighters who feel that way, right? And yeah, and it'll it'll catch up to them mm-hmm. when your back's against the cage and you, and you're in dire straits. Every little moment of weakness will pop its head, will rear its ugly head up, and that's when, you know, that's when the reckoning will come. Had you ever been to Saudi Arabia before all of this? I I hadn't. I hadn't. Okay, so did you go through the whole thing where you get off? You know, you're 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 in the airport, you land. And they give you the flowers and it's the whole big hello with the tea and all that. Did you do all that? Yeah, I, I did. I did. And uh, it was it was an experience yeah. because <laughs> nobody spoke English. So I didn't know what was going on. Oh, wow. And, like, they was trying to usher me through. Someone gave me flowers of guys like, I don't know, they were kind of half yelling at me, taking photos. I <laughs> didn't know what was going on. Yeah, was, there's uh, like a whole like paparazzi crew, right? Yeah, it was it was cool though. It was an experience. Um and and so overall just curious like the entire experience being there, it's still, you know, it's it's still kind of new to the fight scene, but they're trying to make a big push. Mm-hmm. How did you feel like you were treated? What was the experience like over there? Uh, yeah, I it was it was much like any other fight week, if I'm going to be honest, like cuz I I'm not one to go out and about. I I just bunker down into the, the hotel room and just you know, do my work. I, I understand the task, what the task is, and I, I, I treat it as such. But um, yeah, I it was it was a cool experience to be a part of history, to be you know, part of the flagship that is the first main event in 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 Saudi Arabia. That was obviously very special for me. I got more booze than I'm used to, <laughs> so that was cool. You know what I mean? But um, it was understandable. I had I had I still had a fair whack of cheers too. And uh, the occasional Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. <laughs> Did you notice anything about the atmosphere that that has sometimes been criticized, that it doesn't feel as kind of boisterous as uh, the American crowds or the European crowds or the Australian crowds? Did you notice any difference? It's hard to say because the the arena itself was, I, I think I think it was a, uh, from what I believe, it was a soccer pitch. Yeah. So yeah. the it was quite wide. Mm. So I, I, I assume the acoustics played to that a little bit um and i've noticed differences in in, in acoustics with different venues mo- like lots of times like there are some that are pitched really high and narrow um quite close and you like you can feel the vibrations of, of people and then i've had like real wide ones like saudi on the weekend and, and other ones in melbourne where it's almost muted because everyone's so spread out and there's mm-hmm. so much so much air in the room uh, by the way, did you get a chance to meet uh, Turkey Al Sheikh? I, I didn't. I didn't. Oh. Unfortunately. Wow. I did. He seemed so excited, yeah. and he was there in the front row. I thought maybe he'd uh, he congratulate you or something like that. But I know he's a uh, he's a busy guy. There was a photo Definitely. that was posted of you in the bus on your way to the arena. Have you seen this photo? It's an unbelievable shot. And I'm just curious, A, if you've seen it, and B, like what you're thinking about in that moment, if you remember at all. Yeah. Is that when I'm up the back of the bus, head down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Um, I think that was just like a like a lucky photo, but I was oh. laughing because I, I know the music that I was playing. And <laughs> I think at that time I was like belting Celine Dion. Wow. <laughs> really? Yeah, dude. Like it just does not line up with the photo at all but it was just going through um like my my 90s playlist and i think celine dion was just hammering and belting out notes <laughs> during that, that is time incre- man. what song in particular um what's that one that goes that's the way it is oh yeah and that's the way yeah. it is Dude, if you the most, <laughs> yeah, celine man. is from my province like she's she's our hero she's from quebec Oh uh, really? I it's one of my one of my regrets in life is not going to a show when she was performing in Vegas. Yes, because I don't think she performs there anymore. So I um yeah. I'm going to have to live with that now. <laughs> Are you a diehard Celine Dion fan, dude? It it's not. Oh, she's got a lot of really good. Yeah, you know what? Yes, yes, I am. Yes, yes. I am. I'm not going to bit around the bush. Let's. Do this. I love it. She's what great, a legend. <laughs> is your wife a big fan too? 
who isn't like yeah, who in good conscience isn't right <laughs> and 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 to the best of my knowledge you've never walked out to one of her songs though right or have you i know nah. i know tai tuivasa has the the only time i changed my walkout music i lost so okay i'm not not doing that again <laughs> this particular have you rewatched the uh the broadcast the the fight itself yeah 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 i've, I've seen the fight yep the walkout was so intense and i know you're yep. you're usually like a level of intense am i crazy or you were just like a like a level above i don't know there was something a, a, a slight difference yeah. about this it might have been a notch. Obviously, since the DDP fight, I've I've really worked on trying to get um, just making sure I, I my head meets my ability. You know, like just hitting all those notes. But I think this fight was a an extra notch because I was really struggling with the uh, with how late it was. Oh. So um, I'm a bit of an early riser, and I woke up early. I didn't walk out till about midnight. So. I was really tired. I, I tried sleeping that day, and I couldn't. It's um obviously it's it's hard to fight just to, to try to nap fight day. Every time I close my eyes, I can just see like my opponent, right? Right. So right. um I was I was really struggling to hit that level of intensity that I need, and then I'd go back down to being tired, and then I was kind of just playing like this. So once um once we got to the walk, I double, triple, quadruple down on just like really biting down on the mouth guard and, and trying to bring that level up, which I did and it worked. So Yes. Happened. Yes. Okay. So I'm glad that I'm not crazy because I, I, I did feel an extra little like, I don't know, bit of intensity yeah. there. And what's interesting about what you just said, when Francis Ngannou fought in Riyadh against Anthony Joshua, he fought actually like two or three hours later than you it was like 2 33 a.m to cater to the american audience and, and he yeah. said that he was falling asleep backstage too so yeah i'm just wondering what you did like what if, if, if you if you feel yourself in the locker room kind of dozing off and getting tired what do you do to to amp yourself up oh it, it it's hard it, it is really hard and it's something that you know thank god we um we have the time to address now uh successfully obviously um but it's you kind of just gotta. Oh, it's made it's it's tricky because like you're tired, but then you jig yourself up and you start hitting mitts, and then as soon as you stop hitting mitts, you just get tired again. Mm. And like like I said, I'm just playing between that. I'm like trying to stay warm because like while I'm warm and while I'm moving, I can I can I have that energy. But as soon as you you stop, you just get tired maybe even more tired than usual because extra because you've just like worked out a little bit. I don't know. It was just, it was just a, it was just a gauge game really like just trying to get there. But then once I, once I got to that walkout, I just was just in my own head over and over and over biting down in the mouth guard, like just pumping myself up. And you could see when I'm walking out, I, I was like really just doubling down on that. And even when I was in there, I was doubling down on that just cause I had to, had to hold that hold that feeling, right? So, so those uh, Australia cards that happen early in the morning, you actually prefer those over a late night oh, card, mate? Oh, they're the best! Wow, they're the best! Wow, mate! I'm out of there, out of there by midday. I make lunch still. <laughs> yeah, I always thought those were annoying for you guys, but I guess not. Uh, not for me, at, at the very least. Okay, um, and then what a performance! Uh, the overhand right, and then that was kind of the beginning of the end for him. And then, and then the uppercut was just that uppercut is so beautiful. It is so clean. Were you looking for the overhand to, you like, did you see that as an opening as you were preparing for him? And did you think that that would be part of the undoing? And did you think it would happen so quickly? You know, you you always hope for the best, prepare for the worst. So I was I was prepared for a twenty five minute slugfest. I was prepared for that with Shmaev, and I was. And then uh, obviously, Ikram inherited that, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, I didn't prepare any sort of hard plan for Ikram going into the fight, and I mentioned it in a couple of interviews beforehand that I'm going to lean on my experience, and I've, I've I've ran this race a ton of times, and just the way I the way I do the way I fight and the way we we train is that we keep it kind of flexible so that I can adapt on the fly like I make my opponent worry about what I can bring to the table so once I got in there I could within the first minute I saw that every time I would faint or any time I would push in he would reach out you know he would he would he would throw his left hand out to try and get in my way 
and you know then that that's kind of the rest is history that's how i executed that that right hand over the top and yeah that was the beginning of the end i'm doing for him um I'm, I'm wondering about that that uppercut when you land cleanly like that like can you even describe in words what that feels like when you land flush like that well when when i land when i landed the shot like that and i saw the way he dropped i thought it was over like i you I paused for a minute. You may see in the clip, like I paused for a minute because I was like ready just to to leave. But I saw the ref was. I was like the ref wasn't quite convinced enough yet. I was like, ah, oh, yeah. can't risk this. <laughs> I don't want this guy coming back. So I jumped on one, uh, jumped on him. But yeah, it was um when you when you land a shot like that and you see it's it's not really the shot you land. It's the reaction of the person you're fighting. Like I saw the strings get cut, and that's. You know, that's that's how you know. Um, I believe your first stoppage win since 2017 against Jacare. Was that something you had thought about? Oh, I don't need to bring that up, mate. I see, <laughs> I see everyone like headlining on YouTube. First weird stoppage in seven years. Like, good lay off it. Yeah, you know? no, just, <laughs> like, just for facts. I mean, you know, just yeah, notable, um, notable. It's it's not from lack of trying. Okay, <laughs> it's not from <laughs> it's not from lack of trying. But I'm I'm very happy. Hopefully, that gets some of the the community critics of off my back because um. <laughs> I see. I see some posts like Rob. Rob couldn't finish a can of Sprite. Like, yeah. <laughs> thing. Dude, and they're pretty funny. But you know, I'm back. Listen, uh, you know the internet could be a, a pretty cool place. You're you're in that like you're in that rare category of Alex Pereira. You're, I, I don't see a lot of Robert Whitaker hate. Certainly after a fight like that, like the mm -hmm. explosion of love for you after that. And I think there's been kind of this theme this year. It was a little reminiscent of Benoit Saint Denis and Dustin Poirier, where some of the older fans are like, "We're not ready to say goodbye to some of the the legends of the last ten years." Where the UFC and rightfully so are trying to build, you know, younger stars off of the backs of mm. you know the older guys, and and that's kind of how the fight game works. We're seeing it maybe this weekend with uh, MVP and Ian Gary, and it's happened a bunch of times. And uh, just the explosion of love your way. Do you look at any of that? Do you see any of that? Do you feel any of that? Because Everyone's talking about Bobby Knuckles. This like it was just thousand percent joy that I saw afterwards, as far as the reactions, and and I'm I'm wondering if any of that gets to you. I definitely I I one hundred percent feel it, and uh, it's yeah, it, it's it's heartwarming, and 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 it really really drives home a sense of pride because it's something that um obviously I haven't worked towards, but it's something that has been built over the last decade of of my career, and. Uh, I'm gonna say like the the fan the fans that I have they they're loyal they've been with me since the start a lot of them like they I can do no wrong in their eyes almost you know and I I feel that and I I'm honestly I'm fueled by it like just to you know stay true to who I am. I know this is a very hard question for someone like you in particular to answer, but uh, I'll ask it anyway. And and it is kind of reminiscent of Dustin the way people talk about you and support you. <clears throat> um, why do you think they like you so much? Why do you think you have such loyal fans? Why do you think people feel the way they feel about you? Yeah, I, I reckon it's because I'm just funny as heck. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it has to be, no. <laughs> it has to be. Like, I am just a crack up, I reckon. <laughs> you really think that's it? Nah, dude. I don't, no, okay, I don't right. know. Yeah. I, I, make, I make myself laugh at, <laughs> most of the time at the very least. <laughs> Can I offer a theory? I, I think that yeah, there's a lot shoot. of people... Um, in the in the public eye, in the sports world, and now even in the fight game, especially in the fight game, there's a lot of people who are kind of playing characters. And I don't mean the type mm. of characters that we've been hearing about over the last few years, like, oh, this guy's trying to be Conor McGregor. But you know now with the influencer stuff, there's like cosplay fighting going on. And then there's yeah. a select few guys who just seem extremely authentic. In, in a time where there's a lot of inauthentic people, there's a select few that never feel like they're working to impress us or to try to be someone else and that's why mm. i put you in that category with a Pereira and a prochaska um and a dustin it just feels like you are who you are and that's a very admirable thing because who you are is admirable and people are drawn to that and so i feel like that's why people one of the reasons obviously the fighting is fun but in terms of your personality why people like go to bat for you and feel a certain type of way about you is because of that because you come across that way yeah i appreciate that and i've always i've always thought that like people can 
see fake. They can they can smell it. They can sense it. And mate, yeah, they just they just know. And you know, they just know. Mm -hmm. um, also, a tough question to answer, but I just wonder that version of Robert on Saturday. What happens if he would have fought Hamzat? In your opinion, what do you feel? What do you think happens in that fight? Mate, I was I was pretty primed and ready. Like I um I am ninety nine percent sure I would have starched Hamzat as well. And uh, you know our paths may cross one day in the division. You know, as guys in the in the top of the game, but he he dodged a bullet that night. That's for sure. Uh, when you saw his tweet, what was your reaction? <laughs> The first one was like, like, where, um, what, what, what do you say? What do you say? See you soon? Uh, yeah, something like that. Something to that effect. Like, I was like, I was, first thing that I thought was like, where are you going to see me, bro? Like, you can't go into a lot of countries. Like, <laughs> like we're, we're not going to cross paths, dude. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? Like, but. I, yeah, and I'm not going to be in the area. <laughs> like, You're not passing just, through. Yeah, so, but um, yeah, like I said, I'm a, I'm a middleweight. If he's a middleweight, because I know he, he fights a welterweight sometimes as well. Um, mate, if we're both at the top of the game, we're we're gonna our paths may cross, dude. Like I, yeah, I did. I didn't. I didn't duck you. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't not sign the contract to fight you. <laughs> is this something that you want to revisit or is this something that like now that it didn't pan out, you, you, you've kind of moved on for the moment? Uh, it, it doesn't bother me. Like I don't really think about who I want to fight until they give me a name. And uh, I feel like life's less stressful that way. Than... <laughs> okay. Um, and by the way, Ikram, do you think he's someone that has potential to be a player at 185 in the future? Oh, definitely. It just wasn't his night. He's, he's, he's a stud in his own right, and um, I'm sure he'll bounce back from this. Um, you, you were asked about Perth. That's August 17th. Mm -hmm. uh, now that you've had a few days to digest and you also have you know this, this, this mouth and tooth issue, is that realistic for you to, to be a part of that? That's in less than two months. Yeah, no. I, um, I totally forgot that I had to get the rest of my... <laughs> teeth fixed <laughs> like i was just the adrenaline was going man like, okay. <laughs> so i totally forgot I, I had to get that done but also there's a certain there's a certain bit of like i'm no one's uh feeling i'm no one's i'm no one's replacement you know i'm a main event fighter and uh when i when i fight one of those guys i fight for the gold or fight one of the, anyone I'm, I'm a main event guy like i'm gonna i'm gonna put them in my sights and i'm gonna prepare appropriately and i'll go hunting Okay, so so you're ruling yourself out for August seventeenth. Your your services will not be available. No, I'll be there, but I'll be there. Okay. I'm going to take my kids. I'm going to take my kids to their first USC event, and I cannot. Wow. Play. Okay, yeah. so that's fun. Is there any part of you that's annoyed that it seems like you kind of keep missing these Australia dates? Yeah, well, <laughs> particularly Perth, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> particularly Perth, because I've I've pulled out of a Perth card before as well. It's uh, it's 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 a little cursed, but <laughs> you know, I'm sure we'll we'll fix that up one day. Okay. And and so um obviously it's Izzy DDP on that card. I said mm -hmm. afterwards that the fight that makes the most sense is you versus Sean Strickland number one contender fight. Um does that make sense to you? Does that interest you? It's it's like like I said before, it's I don't I don't look at potential fights. I just I just train until they give me a name and then I they enter my crosshairs and then you know that that's my focus. That's that's who I'm going for. That's what hunting season's open, sort of thing. I don't really, I don't really put crosshairs on on just who on what could be because it's, like I said, I think it sounds pretty stressful. Yeah, I, I just feel like you're one away from being there, and he is saying that he's going to wait. But I don't feel like mm -hmm. that totally makes sense, and I feel like you both have a very strong case. So why not just kind of figure it out to see who wins? Or maybe you're saying in your mind, this guy's an idiot. I should be next. And shut the hell up, Ariel. I'm not sure. Mate, on, honestly, I'm telling you, honestly, you don't, I, don't, I, haven't thought, you, I, haven't, I haven't thought about it, dude. <laughs> like, I'm, still, I'm still in holiday mode. Like, I'm going to go away perfect. with my kids and, uh, and my family, and I'm just going to just kick my feet up for a bit. Uh, the reason, okay, I'll just say the reason I, I ask this is because you did that video on your Instagram, and you said that, mm -hmm. like, you know, stay tuned, we might have something. And so that 
set off all the alarms yeah. like what does he got what does he got so that's why yeah I'm, there's I'm, I'm poking no i and i've spoken to the team and i've given like I, i've gone to the ufc and i've given some rough dates on on when i'll be available what cards i'm thinking about and we we i'm letting them talk about it all but um the fact that i've even gone to them means that like maybe something's in the works like maybe something will come up soon so stay tuned so that i can give it down like I, i've I've asked for certain no not asked I've like I've suggested certain certain events certain timelines to to them so um you know what when I find out I will let you know I'll text you okay I'll let you the, know the natural follow up was what were those dates that you were asking about but I I get the sense that you're not going to share those yeah no it's later in the year so we're okay. looking October November December around then I'd like to get one more in at the end of the year if they say to you Hamza in Abu Dhabi are you are you open to that potentially potentially yeah. right. <laughs> like that's uh yeah let's see how it pans out okay um could i ask you're going to be there just curious is he ddp uh you, you're you're so great at breaking these down how do you see that one playing out uh i i think if you if if you were to work it out on paper you'd have to say that ddp has a strong position to to be the favorite in this fight just because of the way sean fought and beat izzy and then the way DDP fought and beat Sean, you'd think that the, the the same sort of game plan, you know, that dogged moving into his space, keeping him uncomfortable get, uh, approach will work against Izzy. So you'd have to you'd have to think logically that DDP would be the favourite, but it's not it's not a long shot by any means to see like Adesanya just picking him apart for five rounds and staying on the outside either, right? So that's how I feel. <laughs> Was there an official pick there or you're just kind of sitting on the fence? I, I, I think DDP wins. Okay. I, do. I, I okay. think he can just make it a bit of a dogfight, make it uncomfortable, only because DDP's executed the game plan that I think can beat Adesanya more recently than Adesanya's fought and beat someone of – that has had that sort of approach, right? That's the only only reason. A any issues with Izzy getting a, a, another title shot? Nah, what he does is his own business. You know, Fair I don't enough. try not to worry about other people's stuff. Understood, understood. Um, and and just because it's coming up this weekend, and I, I sort of compared you to them in terms of the connection you have with the fans, Yuri and Alex. Uh, mm. Do you do you have a a take on that? Is that even a fight that you will watch? You say you don't watch a lot of UFC. Is that yeah, one that no, you enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I try to watch big cards. And uh, let's say I'm around and I'm not doing anything. I'll watch the fights. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's just, it's just that, like, if the fights are on and I'm really into a game or I'm – like, Sundays is uh, family day for me. That's so right. Yeah, you guys are if on I, Sunday. If, if, I'm, if I'm out with the family having lunch, I'm not going to not do that in to watch a fight unless it's really big and I'm interested in it. This is kind of one I would be interested in. I want to see this fight. Uh, you'd have to – you'd have – you'd be silly – not to think Pereira is the favorite. Dude is so consistent, so consistent. He would, he's, he's a safe approach. Like, I'm going to back him because of that. Really like Yuri, though. In the first, in their first pairing, I backed Yuri because I thought his unorthodox way of striking would be effective on Pereira. And I thought it was until he got caught. And yeah, I, I'm going to back Pereira in this fight because the dude, like I said, the guy is so consistent. But he either he knocks Yuri out or Yuri's going to win because that's kind of <laughs> kind of the only way Yuri loses, right? <laughs> Killer be killed. Yeah. Um, yeah and, yeah. and obviously he stopped him in, uh, in November. Um, okay, one last one for you, and then I'll let you go. It was International Fight Week last year, the DDP fight, right? And um, mm -hmm. obviously that didn't go your way, but look at how things have changed in a year. That night with all the disappointment, if someone would have said like it's it's going to figure itself out you'll go 2 and 0 in the next 365 two great wins like did you did you have faith that this would just be a minor speed bump and you'd be right back essentially to where you were last year or has this panned out better than you thought on that night in July of last of last year in Las Vegas uh you know mate i uh. How do I how do I respond to this? It's, I I have absolute faith 
in my ability. You know, like I feel like 90% of my career is just trying to live up to my own potential. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I knew losing is just, it, losing is always just a speed bump. It's just, it's just a harsh learning curve, but, juggling the self-doubts and the inner voice inner voicings and you know those those everyone has them those inner voices that say maybe you're done <laughs> you know what i mean it it sucks it sucks but like, i never never give up never give up you know one step at a time and literally fight for every inch you every inch you take so i don't know I yes and no Yes and no. <laughs> I'm not really giving you a solid answer no, on no. that. It's a, it's a whole podcast in itself. <laughs> I feel no. I understand the, the, those voices. Were they particularly louder in the in the immediate aftermath of that fight? Oh yeah, yeah. I've, I've mentioned like that. That lead up into into Costa was was yeah. It was tricky. It was hard because um, just that DDP performance was terrible, and the way I felt was terrible. So my headspace leaving that fight wasn't great. So it was the camp. Most of the camp was just trying to get my head right, if mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest. And and do you hear those like after a night like Saturday and now as as like, you know, you kind of creep back into normal life, do you hear those still? Are they always there or do they completely die off after a couple of wins? No, nah, they, they're always there. They're like, they're always there. And you've got to got to remind myself every every time I'm about to walk out, every time I'm about to fight, like, you know, you why can't I finish the guy quick? Why can't it be me? Why can't I do that? You know what I mean? Because you think, oh, I'm going to lose. Oh, you know, there's always self doubt and there's always things like that. But you got to, you got to fight him. You got to fight him. You can't let you, you can't let yourself be beaten by your own demons. You know, that's how. That's when people say a lot of things like, you beat yourself before mm -hmm. you even stepped out there. You can't, you can't even lose to yourself, right? And it's yeah, it's it's not easy. It's not easy, but yeah, you got to try. And and you just said one it was super fascinating thing there. You said ninety percent of your career has been to try to like live up to your own potential. What do you mean by that? I think I'm. I think that I'm better than I've allowed myself to be. Mm. Allowed I, yourself. I feel like because I think a, a big part of the game is trying to get your head where your body is, like where your skill set is, where like what you can be. Like a guy with a bad headspace is going to fight poorly no matter how talented or how gifted he is. That's just the truth of it. And I feel like a lot of my career has been just trying to get those two in sync. And I feel sometimes my best performances when you see me and I'm absolutely unstoppable is when those have kind of lined up. But I feel um, skill-wise – and experience wise it's all culminating to a point where i i'm better than i can than i've shown so far i feel like i'm better and i'm just trying to get my headspace right where it needs to be to really bring that out of myself and uh i feel like last fight was a, a good a good start mm. and uh yeah i'm like i i've said before i think the best the best years of my career are still ahead of me and I look forward to to trying to bring that out. Well, that is an incredible thought. Um, congratulations on an incredible win, a beautiful win, another one for the highlight reel. And uh, I didn't even remember that. I thought it was last year, your last finish. I Someone told me that and I looked at it I was like, wow, time flies seven years. So I wasn't harping on that just for the record. Um, <laughs> it's always a pleasure to watch you compete and fight and obviously to speak to you as well. So uh, honestly, I hope you get well soon. It doesn't sound fun. So hopefully that resolves itself soon. And uh, we'll see you back in there later on this year. Thank you, as always, Robert. And congratulations on a phenomenal win. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.